Great. Well, good morning. It's lovely to be with you all. Um, as uh, Sam said, my, my job really, um, we, nobody really knows what it is, but um, it does have a fancy title, which is the main thing. Um, and the idea, I think, is just, uh, well, my passion is to get the Bible open and help people find the Lord Jesus. Because um, we get to know him better, isn't it? Um, that we learn to follow him more closely. So can I pray before I speak? Loving Lord Jesus, we pray for your presence here by your spirit amongst us this morning. As we think on this uh, familiar passage from the Old Testament, would you be working within our hearts and our minds to fix our eyes on you and draw us ever closer to you? For we ask it in your very precious name. Amen. I know what it is. It's uh, super to be here. It's a thrill to join you, especially in person rather than um, entirely uh, online, uh, although I have to say what we're talking about this morning is all about rules and regulations, which might feel a little heavy for this time on a Sunday morning, right now. Uh, well, I'm sure you'll agree that rules and regulations are the big thing at most, aren't they? Whether that's a rule of six, or before that, rules about different numbers of two households, whether it's uh, local rules for different parts of the country facing different challenges, rules about washing hands, about keeping distance, about covering faces, even how, when, and where we can gather to worship. Um, I have a desk in an office. Uh, I don't really go there anymore, but even if I did, there are rules about uh, which way round that building I can walk, following arrows on the floor, uh, who I can be in the office with. I'm not allowed to sit opposite or next to someone, only diagonally across, so you can imagine how complicated it is trying to work out when I can go in and can't, and so lastly I've just given up. Uh, there's rules and regulations everywhere, aren't there? We uh, scour the newspapers, we eagerly await announcements from number 10 Downing Street, we scratch our heads and try to make sense of 10 pm curfews and quarantine periods and who is or isn't allowed to test. Perhaps now more than ever our lives are governed, aren't they, by rules and regulations. So I wonder if you'd indulge me and let me notice just two things about all these current rules and regulations this morning, and then we'll go to the Bible. Is that right? First of all, these rules that we're all trying so hard to understand and follow, these rules are what we might call qualifiers. That is, you have to keep the rules first if you want to get the benefit next, yes? That's the point behind them, surely. If you, if you want to be saved from COVID, you have to observe the rules and regulations now. You see, it doesn't work the other way around, does it? At least not for you. If you've uh, caught the virus already, then no amount of washing your hands or standing two metres apart will make any odds. Uh, then it's too late, you've got it. Of course, sticking to the rules can still help others, but you see the point, do you? If you want to be saved from COVID, you have to keep the rules in the first place. Now that's too simplistic, isn't it? I know none of us is in total control, but being safe depends on what you do, on whether or not you stick by the rules. That's the claim. And that's the first thing, uh, that you have to keep the rules if you want to be safe. The second is that whatever else these rules are, they are restrictors, aren't they? Which of us hasn't found life feeling restricted, somehow shrunk or diminished in recent days, weeks and months? And fundamentally what these rules are designed to do, albeit for a noble reason, is to restrict our lives. So, uh, in our case we have uh, family at opposite ends of the country. Under the current rules, I think, unless anything's changed again, uh, we could take our children to visit their grandparents on the east coast, but we can't take them to visit their grandparents on the west coast because they're in a local lockdown. And local lockdowns aside, uh, we can't take them to play with any of their cousins because visiting the ones who live in the middle of the country would break the rule of six, and visiting the ones who live in a different country uh, would force all the quarantine regulations upon us, rather than the same ones you would have had if you'd got to see Elton John last night. But you see, if you want the benefits of COVID freedom, you have to do the work of keeping these rules before you get it. And so the rules fundamentally are restrictive. Okay, enough of that. Uh, now let's think about a different set of rules, a set which are actually even more famous than hands, face, space, stay alert, save lives, whatever the slogan is. Uh, these are rules and regulations which we heard the girls read to us earlier on. We know them as the Ten Commandments. Now you know them well, I presume, 
I did think about giving you a little test to see if you could list them all in order, but it's too early for that. Um, but what I'd really love to notice about the Ten Commandments is that they are, in fact, the exact opposite of all these COVID rules and regulations. That might surprise you. But let me show you what I mean. And I want to start by that, showing you the very beginning of Exodus chapter 20. That you notice, don't you, the Ten Commandments don't begin with a command. You've got to get three verses in before you get to the first command. Now, the Ten Commandments begin with a statement about God, about who he is and what he's done. So this is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. Uh, God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And then you shall have no other gods before me. Now, in case you're a little bit sketchy uh, on the story, God's chosen and called one particular family. They've now grown into a large and substantial nation. He's chosen them to be his special people here on earth. They're to live in a certain way, which in a moment, the Ten Commandments is going to describe for them. But by living in that certain way, they're to be a witness to God in the world around them. They're supposed to communicate something as a visual aid, if you like, of who God is and what he's like. That's the big idea. The problem is, that by various twists and turns, they ended up enslaved in Egypt. Pharaoh uh, has been uh, particularly cruel to them. And it's only after 50 years of suffering that we get to this reading this morning. But notice where it starts, Exodus 20, verse 1. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. That is, it's the other way round to the rules about COVID. God doesn't say, I am the Lord your God, who will save you from Egypt if, when, you have kept these commands. No, he says, I'm the Lord your God who has already saved you from the land of Egypt, doesn't he? The COVID rules, you see, they're qualifiers. You have to keep them first if you want to be kept safe. But the Ten Commandments are not that. Israel has already been saved. It's been made safe. It's been rescued before God even begins to explain what the rules are. Do you see? It's the pattern of the gospel. It, of the way God deals with his people. Every bit as true for us today as it was for Israel then. You see, we might not be enslaved in Egypt, but the pages of the New Testament certainly tells us that we are slaves to, well, to sin, to ourselves, to our brokenness and our twisted desire, to those habits and practices which dislodge God from his rightful place in our world, in our lives, and which pitch us headlong towards our destruction. We've become enslaved to that. Now you can see that plainly in the world, whether it's oceans full of plastics and forests burning, whether it's whole people starving while others grow fat, whether it's war, destruction and injustice at every turn. Well you can see it if you're honest plainly enough in yourself, can't you? Your own little brands of greed or of pride or of selfish concern or of lack of love for your neighbours. Isn't that true? Well, if you can see that, then this is very good news, isn't it? Because the Ten Commandments don't start with, do well enough, and I will save you. Then we'd all be lost. Now, the Ten Commandments, as with the Gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ, start with, I am the Lord your God, and I've already saved you. If you're hearing this, God says to Moses, you are safe, you are out of Egypt, you are free. Can you see? Isn't it wonderful? Because we're so very good at not living up to God's creative design. We'd have no chance if it were down to us, would we? But actually, wonderfully, God solves the problem at just the right time, the Apostle Paul tells us. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ Jesus stepped into the world, faced the problems of sin, and died that we might be saved from them, that we might be forgiven and welcomed, even adopted into God's own family. Isn't that extraordinary? COVID rules are qualifiers, but we don't have to qualify for God. God's already done the work to make us safe, to make us free. These rules don't come first. God, in his love and his saving action, that is what comes first. But then, even better, second, again, so unlike the COVID rules, the Ten Commandments are not restrictive. In fact, again, they're the precise opposite. Now, your first instinct might be to think I'm crazy for saying that. After all, so famously, the Ten Commandments are, uh, 
Well, it's all thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You can't get more restrictive than that, can you? But look a little bit more closely. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I've brought you out here, he says, to freedom. In our case, that bringing us out cost God the extraordinary price of the life of his one and only son. Does it really seem likely that God won for us such a costly freedom, only to place upon us the burden of ten restrictions? Well, I'd love to encourage you to ponder this uh, in the week to come, but I think these ten commandments aren't actually setting out a restricted, small, diminished form of life at all. No, actually, they give us uh, the fullness, the goodness, the richness, the vibrancy and reality of the God of life that God always created for us to live. Think of them for a moment. Thou shalt not murder. Well, that creates a society in which life cannot be easily disposed of, because it's a society in which all life is precious and valuable. Thou shalt not commit adultery, crash into worlds in which faithfulness is prized. Thou shalt not bear false witness against their neighbour. Well, I don't know, maybe you love telling lies. Either way, it seems we're surrounded, doesn't it, so much of the time by an increasingly shrill tone of fake news. But don't we all want to live in a world where the truth actually matters? And these Ten Commandments do restrict certain behaviours, but the point of them is not the restriction, the point of them is the freedom which the opposite creates, isn't it? Compare lockdown, the original one, where you could only leave your house for one form of exercise each day. Compare that with a world in which truth and generosity, faithfulness and honour, balance and goodness, in which they thrive. They're different worlds, aren't they? And only one of them is the world the Lord designed for us to live in. No more than that, one of these is the kind of life that God has created us for li to live in and has given the life of his Son to bring us back home to. Isn't that astonishing? rules and regulations. We know them all. We're surrounded by them and our lives are shaped so fundamentally by them. Friends, I'm not suggesting that we give up on the government's advice. I am suggesting we need to base our lives on a very different set of rules and regulations. A set which don't require us to achieve perfection before God will love us. He's already loved us more than we could ever describe. This is a set which uh, releases us to live the free, the true, the real life we were always meant to live. I am the Lord your God. He brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. I have done that. So now, friends, have no other gods, no other systems or rules or philosophies or plans. No other gods before me. Thank you.